Hi guys, this is Ashley back with another video. Before we get into the video, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on post notifications. So fans are calling out Megan Thee Stallion for dressing similar to Nicki Minaj like in 2015-2016. Um, she was on Jimmy Kimball with a similar outfit to what Nicki Minaj has worn for the Night is Still Young music video, a lot of people feel like, um, you know, Megan Thee Stallion is purposely copying Nicki Minaj or she has an obsession, okay? Let me know how y'all feel about that. Now, some fans were also bringing up the fact that, you know, um, Megan Thee Stallion has worn ponytails before. She doesn't do it often, um, but she has worn it before. And I personally think that you know, it's probably a coincidence. I don't think she was looking at old pictures of Nicki Minaj and trying to dress like her, okay? I think it was probably a coincidence. Um, she usually, in my opinion, I don't really think Megan Thee Stallion can dress um, ever. I think she's probably one of the worst, um, you know, female rapper dressers in the industry. Uh, but I thought this was one of her best looks. This look, to me was better than anything she wore at the Video Music Awards this year. So I think she ate up this look, but I don't think she was intentionally trying to copy Nicki Minaj. So let me know how y'all feel about that. Now, moving on to Cardi B. Section 8 gang is calling out Cardi B for her laziness. As we know, she canceled a big performance at One Music Fest. She put out a statement and fans are not too happy. One Section 8 gang member said, You are able to be in the club three times a week postpartum, but your first music performance in the morning results into a cancellation. It's just so sad to see what you have become. Yikes! <laughs> oh my goodness, they are eating Cardi B alive. Goodness gracious, okay? You know, what happened to having empathy? But I don't really feel bad for Cardi B like that because to be quite honest, they are right. She was throwing it back, twerking, drinking, doing all this sorts of stuff. Her baby not even one month old. And now um, she's sick, recovering from all the hooting and hollering she's been doing the last few weeks trying to make off the cheat jealous. So I don't really feel bad for her. She was too busy in the club and in court. That's all she do is go to club and then go to court. But she needs to be in the studio. Now, moving on to Megan Thee Stallion's album. Okay. Um, she definitely was throwing shots. Nikki, you got to come to the front of the congregation because Megan is still throwing shots at you. Now, in Bigger in Texas... Megan starts off the second verse and said, everything bigger in Texas ain't no injections. Okay, so she's saying that she is natural. Other female rappers are not. That's basically what she's saying. We at the poll, no elections. Then she said, be where don't come around me trying to pass out drugs. I ain't popping no Teslas. Okay. Okay, well, she's admitting that she don't pop pills or take any substances, even though, no shade, Megan, you do be drinking. So, you know, you forgot to put that in there. But I feel like the no injections bar, that definitely was shade at Nicki Minaj, in my opinion. Okay, especially since a lot of people now have been saying that she's on the Ozepic. She got surgery because she lost some weight. And then she said, irritating these B words like eczema. I can hang anywhere like a testicle. She said she'd been winning, so they thinking is rigged. Never thought I would do it this big. I'm the youngest B word owning my masters. B words own us F stuck in the F deal. Um, so I definitely think that was shade at Nicki Minaj too. Okay, when she says she's always winning and people think that it's rigged, you know, Nicki Minaj has been calling out Devil Nation a lot lately because if we're being completely honest, she thinks that they're pulling strings for Megan Thee Stallion. 
And then she also said, always begging me to crash out with these losers. Shut up and enjoy the music. So, you know, another shot at Nicki Minaj because a lot of people felt like Nicki crashed out when Piss came out. So she's saying she's not going to be doing that. Now, in Bourbon, she said, I ain't got a beef with nobody about ish. You know who the it B word is. Y'all keep arguing over edited pics. Ask my accountant. He'll tell you it's lit. Outdoing any B word coming from Meg. I sell out arenas. The F you saying. Okay. I feel like that was Loki a shot Nicki Minaj. B words buy ass and ain't fixing their face. If you come in for me, better pick up the pace. That's very interesting. Is that a shot at Cardi B? Was that a shot at Botch and Bitter? Then she said, Hot Girl Production, head of the label, nothing but hits coming out of the stable. Then she shouts out Camel Face. She said, I wear a rock. B word, I feel like Jigga. Okay, Rock Nation. So that's why she put that bar in there. Then she said, these B words ain't built like me. They trying to find a surgeon. These embers love this ASS. I ain't finna stop twerking. Then she said, JB cutting for niggas that do the bare minimum. Come to me, um, everybody get critical. They be forcing. They hating is pitiful. B-words is lame. I don't want to sit with them. B-words is mouthing. I don't want to click with them. They compare you to me. You a synonym. I'm producing these B-words like Timberland. So that was shade to Joe Budden um, and Erica Stanks. You know, Joe Budden is critical of Megan Thee Stallion. And so basically she calling him out. Then she said... If you're sick of me, B-word, you better stay on bed rest because I'm finna F up the rest of your year. So allegedly, a lot of fans feel like that is also shade towards Nicki Minaj. And I don't know if this was Ice by Shade, but she said, You know I'm sick of you mother effings acting like I don't be rapping my ASS off. I know a booth hate to see one of you non-rapping as B-words coming. That's what Megan Thee Stallion said. I wonder if that's shade towards Ice Spice. Because she get along with a lot of the newer female rappers. But she never click up with Ice Spice or Sexy Red. So I feel like that was shade towards them. Now the collaboration she did with Flo Millie called Rock Steady. She said only B word I'm in competition with is me. Holes taking shots. So I came out with a drink. But the drink ain't out yet. Did she put out the drink yet? I never hear nobody talk about Megan Thee Stallion's alcohol company. I think Queen B took the shine away from Megan Thee Stallion's alcohol company, in my opinion. And then I think she was subbing herself. She said, I should pimp rap B words, all that ass they be selling. And I was like, didn't you sleep with a producer? Wasn't it Doodle on a beat she was sleeping with for beats? Who's selling coochie more than you? I don't understand. Ain't you the industry pass around? I was very confused by that lyric. I don't know who she don't say that, but that sounded like she was projecting. She was talking about herself. Now, in motion, she was talking a lot of trash towards the end of the song. Okay. Um, she said, I can tell by the way y'all raggedy hoes use your 24 hours and y'all day to talk about another B word. Y'all hoes really ain't got inch going on. B word word about Megan Thee Stallion. I'm already rich. Okay. And then she said that people need to get their money up. Some fans feel like she was talking junk about Nicki Minaj being on station head throwing shade. But I really feel like she was probably talking about the fans on social media. Okay. Because if you're telling... Um, people to get their money up. Nicki Minaj is richer than you. So she couldn't be talking about Nicki Minaj. I know Megan ain't that dumb. I know she didn't do her homework in college, but I know she ain't that dumb. Now, in her song, Like a Freak, um, Megan Thee Stallion says, add them up. B-words ain't even a fraction. Okay. Now, didn't Nicki Minaj 
have a song called Fractions, okay, where she was throwing shade at Megan Thee Stallion. So she said, add them up, B-words ain't even a fraction. I'm hungry in the game like I'm fighting for a faction. Then she said, B-words want to be me. They look like my old ID. That's an Erica Stanks shot. Um, she said, no edit on these mother effing JPGs. Titties showing through the mother effing JPG. Gaultier, B-word, I know I've been the GOAT to your fave. I'm like, who is calling Megan the GOAT? On the ballpoint, I got the best pen in the game. Okay, which I don't know if that's true. The best pen in the game? I don't know if I believe that. Now, in the song right now, she said, B-Words only mad when the shoe fit. I'm the model B-Words is built like. How the F you want to beef with the blueprint? Now, Nicki Minaj put out an album called The Pink Print. So she said, why you want to beef with the blueprint? Doesn't Camel Face have an album called Blueprint? Interesting. She said, I really be in a whole skin. Make them mad, I'll do it again and again and again and again and again. Then she said in the second verse, um, you know, next year I'm going bigger. If you think you hate me now, I'm about to hurt your feelings. So a lot of people think that is shade towards Nicki Minaj. It looks like she is sending bars for Camel Face, like she's sticking up for him. Then she tweeted a lyric from one of her songs. She said they love to talk about numbers because they can't talk about talent. Okay? I think I went over that line before. A lot of people are speculating that she's talking about Cardi B. Because Cardi B talk about numbers, but, you know, she ain't got the talent. The other girls that don't really have talent are not really doing the numbers. Cardi B went top 10 this year. Even though the song kind of flopped because after that fell down the charts, but she did go top 10. And she do got five number ones that she tends to brag about. And like I said before, I don't really think they mess with each other like that. I think their friendship is fake. But overall, if I had to be honest with you, I feel like the deluxe was better than the original album. Is it just me or was the deluxe better than the original album? Let me know how y'all feel about it. But there were a few songs that I did feel like were trash. Um, the TYG song with Spirit Box, that was garbage. I don't care if you're trying to go rock or punk. Whatever that sound was, it was terrible. Oh my goodness, it was trash. I couldn't stand that one. Best friends, Megan, please use some more auto-tune when you sing. Please. That sounded terrible too. I did not like the Best Friends record because I don't think Megan can sing like that. I, I thought that was terrible. I'm sorry. But Bigger in Texas, I did like. Bourbon, I did like. I thought that song was good. The Flo Millie collaboration um, is okay. It's not my favorite. But I do feel like they fit well on a record together. I do feel like that. The Mamushi record's okay um, with Twice. I didn't really care for when the record originally came out with that other guy. Because I feel like that song is for kids. It's not really for adults. I don't really care for that song. It's like a TikTok record. Um, so it don't matter who she put on the remix. I really don't care for it. But I do feel like Twice, Low Key, fit better on the record in my opinion. I don't know. I feel like, um, Twice, um, I guess they was rapping. Is it 12 people in the group Twice? How many people are in the group Twice? Okay, because there was a lot of people in that picture. But I felt like the remix, in my opinion sounded better than the original but i don't really care for either um record because it's a tiktok record and it's like for kids in my opinion but overall you can definitely see that megan the Stallion was throwing some shade at Nicki minaj i feel like she do shade at ice spice and sexy red okay um i feel like she low-key was throwing shade at cardi b even though she pretends like she cool with cardi b because she don't like Nicki minaj which that's the thing about megan and i feel like she kind of fake like, I feel like it's fake of you to throw shade at Cardi B and then um, pretend like you cool her. That's one thing about Megan Thee Stallion. Their fake friendship eventually will get exposed. Okay? I'm calling it in 2026. Their fake friendship is going to get exposed because you can't throw shade in records 
and then Kiki afterwards. That's fake. Now, it has been reported that Queen B will perform at Kamala Harris rally in Houston um, today. Okay, according to NBC News reports, they said this the last time. So I fully don't believe them. Okay, because I remember them saying that she was supposed to perform at the uh, Democratic Convention or something like that. And she never did. Okay, they be using Queen B for clicks and views. Now, Queen B also announced her brand new fragrance. See, Lemire, let me know if y'all gonna go buy it. Okay, a lot of people are wondering why she keep putting out new fragrances and new hair care products. Me personally, I think people be secretly buying Queen Bee's products, but they just don't want to be open about it because it's not cool to like Queen Bee anymore. You know, a lot of people think it's popular to be hating on Queen Bee, but I know some of y'all probably bought the first perfume and y'all going to buy the second one. Okay, because I don't think that she would put out another fragrance if the first one flopped, okay? Um, Especially since she just put one out. I mean, it was, what, last year or a few months ago? It's not like she put one out two years ago, okay? She just put one out last year. So she must have been selling. And that perfume was expensive, okay? I think it was like $200. Um, Unfortunately, I won't be buying this, you know, no shade of Queen Bee, but, you know, I got to smell it before I buy it. I don't just buy perfume. You got to smell it before you buy it. Maybe she should put it in Sephora or Ulta Beauty or something like that so people can smell it before they buy the perfume and then it will sell out. Now, Rihanna tells Access Hollywood her dream collaboration right now is Queen Billy. Who's your dream collaborator to like sing with? Like do a song with. Mm. Mm. If I could only do a song with Billie Eilish. Ooh, that's a good one. Mm -mm. She's so good. I think Rihanna would just be saying anything sometimes, okay? Because at the end of the day, what would be stopping you from doing a collaboration with Billie? Nothing. You know Billie would jump at the opportunity to work with you. But you lazy. You don't want to put out no music. So I really don't believe she want to collaborate with anybody. I think she just all talk. I'll believe it when I see it. Okay, forehead? Until then, you get nothing from me. I don't believe nothing you say. Now, Riri also talks about um, Kung Fu Kenny, the king of rap, performing at the Super Bowl. This is what she had to say. What do you think of Kendrick during the Super Bowl? Go. Mm-hmm. Go, let's go. What What is there to doubt on that? No, it's going to be amazing. I'm just asking you what you think because you've done the Super Bowl before. You have special insight. It's a diamond on a on a ring finger, honey. It's it's it's, it's meant to be. I'm with you, it's Kendrick Lamar. He deserves it. I cannot wait to see it, Kendrick. Thank you. See, I always knew I kind of liked forehead. I always knew I did. See, Rihanna. She knows what the people really want, okay? Whether y'all want to admit it or not, okay? She was ready to step. She said, what's the problem with it? Exactly. It is a diamond ring on a ring finger. Kung Fu Kenny about to take over and dominate the Super Bowl. Going to be one of the best performances of all time. So, I agree with Rihanna on that. Usually, I don't really care for forehead. But she might have to move back up on my top five list. You know what I'm saying? I might have to go purchase some Fenty. She's speaking facts, okay? That's exactly what she's supposed to say, okay? And y'all need to uh, fall in line and thank uh, Kung Fu Kenny, too, for performing at the Super Bowl. She said, thank you, Kendrick. Y'all need to do the same. Rihanna know what she's talking about. Finally, she's saying something intelligent. I really respect that statement, Rihanna. You know what I'm saying? At first, you know, I wasn't really feeling you like that, but you back on my good list. I mess with you now. Now, Paola Board will be receiving Donkey of the Day. Olivia Rodrigo has been named the Paola Board's Touring Artist of the Year? How? And I love uh, Olivia. Like, it's really no shade because I love Olivia Rodrigo. I like Olivia a little bit more than I like Sabrina Carpenter. But nobody was even talking about her tour. I mean, you just going to overlook Nicki Minaj? You going to overlook Doja Cat? I mean, come on now. Stop. 
Stop, stop, stop. Don't play around. Don't play around. Y'all need to stop doing that. Olivia Rodrigo did not have the best tour in 2024. Stop. Nobody was even talking about her tour. I didn't even know she was on tour. What is this? Stop playing around. Stop. I mean, come on now. Y'all just playing in Nikki's face. Y'all should have gave that to Nicki Minaj or Doja Cat. I would even respect it a little bit more if they gave it to Megan, even though her tour did not sell out. But Olivia Rodrigo, why? Nobody's talking about her tour. Is it the highest grossing pop tour of all time? No, it's not. So why are we praising Olivia Rodrigo randomly? That's weird. That's very odd. Now, there was a trailer that came out featuring SZA and Kiki Palmer um, for a movie called One of Them Days, produced by Issa Rae. Um, and the movie will come out January 24th. I watched the trailer, and the movie seems a little bit cheesy. I like Kiki Palmer. I like SZA. But the movie feels like a broke-down version of Friday. That's what it was given. Okay? And I didn't laugh once from watching the trailer. Ain't this supposed to be a comedy? This don't even make no type of sense. Okay? Um, they think just because they put Cat Williams in the movie that people just gonna randomly laugh. Like, it was given cheesy and corny and a chop, in my opinion. Won't be watching this. No shade. Now, moving on to Doja Cat. Doja Cat tweeted album and her hairstylist also posted a picture of Doja Cat possibly being on set, okay? So she is letting the fans know that she is coming to take over 2025, okay? And like I said, Doja Cat's coming. I feel like the next album finna be a major hit, okay? Because y'all let Scarlett flop. Y'all did not allow Scarlett to sell over... 100,000 first week. So she's coming and she's going to take over 2025. Let me know how y'all feel about that. Now, Gorilla Glue does a PR stunt. Basically, um, she posted up with Da Vinci from BMF. If you don't know who Da Vinci is, that guy, he's on BMF, um, the show on Stars. Um, I kind of feel like BMF is trash compared to power, but that's neither here or there. Um, and she's been posting pictures of her being pregnant. Um, a lot of people are saying that this is a publicity stunt and I feel like it's probably for a music video or something in regards to her music. Okay. I don't really feel like Gorilla Glue is just randomly knocked up by Da Vinci. Okay. And I definitely don't think he would be the father. No shade. Okay. But with that being said, let me know how y'all feel about this. I feel like she should have came up with a different PR stunt because you was just out and about and you didn't have a stomach. So this really is not a good PR stunt, but maybe she's following the botch and bitter formula. Get knocked up and pregnant and try to use that to sell my music. You know, that's what botch and bitter does. But unfortunately, it hasn't worked for botch and bitter in the last few years. Now, Gucci Mane and Sexy Red um, put out a single together. I think it's called You Don't Love Me or something like that. The song is trash. Okay. This is a negative 50 in my opinion. Um, I think the song is completely trash and a waste of time to be quite honest. They could have kept this in the stash. Now moving on to Musty Walker. She puts out her single, A Heart of a Woman. Okay. A soulful R&B type of song. Um, a heartbreak record. And to be quite honest, I like the song. I give it an 8 out of 10. Okay? I think she killed it. Um, I feel like she kind of could have came back with a stronger lead single, in my opinion. You know, no shade. But I do like this song. It, you know, it's given real R&B. That's what it's given to me. It's given real R&B, Mary J. Blige, very soulful, very um, slow. It's definitely not a TikTok record, but I feel like she killed it. I'll give her an 8 out of 10. I do like the song. Definitely might put this in my playlist. But anyway, I got some hot tea on Patreon. Link will be in the description. Have a great day.